After some recent posts on Instagram, there's been some interest in this little veggie garden of mine. And so I thought maybe you'd want to have a look around and, and see what's what, you know, see what the intent is, what works and what doesn't work. Um, so I'll be quite frank about that. Some of it's rubbish and some of it's worked really well. But come and have a look. Now the soil here was so bad, I thought that really we needed to um, have it in raised beds. And I wanted then to create a really strong geometric shape and one that you could sit within. You know, I love the idea of being surrounded by growing food. So the whole idea here was to uh, use the beds to create the outsides of a, a room, so to speak. And I think wherever possible you really want to do that, why not sit, be able to sit in your veggie garden? So I had 24 sheets of colour bond rolled into half circles and riveted them together uh, to create these 12 beds. They're about 860 mil high and I, when I put them all in place in a square, I went, and I think I want the corner ones a bit higher. You can see from here, um, the corner ones out the front and behind us here are higher than, uh, than the rest of them, just to lift on the corners. So to create this kind of sense of being in a bowl and it worked instantly. That worked really well. Actually, it turns out that the high beds are really a fantastic height for working in, for weeding and for digging, because you just don't have to bend at all. So they're probably a better height than the shorter ones, but the variation's quite nice. I actually decided, um, having seen a photo in James Van Sweden and Wolfgang Irma's book, Bold Romantic Gardens, of a shadow line painted on the side of a fence to make it look like the sun was permanently out. I thought I'd give, it, give this a go. And from here you can see I used two-tone um, tank, two-tone colour bond colours in order to give this sense of a shadow line and put the pale side out kind of towards the sunrise. It was a stupid idea. It just didn't work at all. It was ridiculous. Uh, but as it happens, it doesn't, I haven't lost anything anyway, but it just didn't have the effect I wanted. But I also would really like the idea of broken concentric circles um, created by hedge around the outside of the tanks. And this was partly to shade them. And you can see through here that there's a couple echoing the same shape through here and others on the opposite side over, over there. And that's been kind of fun. You know, it's, it, it certainly is a really strong design decision um, and it, really influences the shape and form of the garden. And the intention was that when there is no veggie, veggies in the veggie beds, and that happens most summers because we don't have enough water, so I just leave them empty, that at least there's plenty of greenery. Um, but the other trouble is, is that they, they end up, I'm not about to find them now, they end up kept harboring a whole lot of snails behind there. And that kind of freaked me out because every time it rained, this army of snails would come out from behind the hedge and, and hit the veggie garden. But then as someone pointed out to me that if you can get your snails to concentrate in one area, then that's a fantastic thing anyway. At least you can control them that way. So that's the way I think of it now. But so then the intention was also to have little bits and pieces of planting down in the gravel. So um, this Echeveria, has been a, a massive success, that huge echeveria. You know, it gets frozen solid so much that you can snap off leaves like you're breaking off a chunk of solid ice. Uh, but it's, it doesn't seem to worry it. After months and months of that, it doesn't look quite as good as it currently does, but it's fine. Um, but this is in pure clay, as are the box and this um, Poa Lavalardieri, which, um, you know, I'm no great fan of, but it's, it's um, fantastically obliging. And phyla not a flora, this um, ground cover that's just now coming to an end in its flowering, um, but is a phenomenal, uh, a phenom phenomenally obliging and drought tolerant ground cover. It's a little scary, it's a little rampant and a little bit invasive, but in a spot like this in solid gravel over the top of clay, you know, why not? And then this Miscanthus, uh, this is Miscanthus transmorrisonensis. There's some big plants down uh, the pathway here and they've self-sown into the gravel, or in this case, a single plant has self-sown. Uh, transmorrisonensis is a little worrying from that point of view, more so than any other Miscanthus I've grown. But look, it's, it's, 
I, I love it. It gets cut down, of course, in winter, and it's kind of a relief once it's gone. But it's fun to have it there. I quite like to create a really strong pattern with these tanks and then break that pattern at every opportunity. The pattern has to be strong enough to sustain being broken, so you still read the pattern. But that's what these beds do perfectly. It's changed a bit over time. We just put some big windows in along the back of the house. And uh, that's a major part of the house that never was there before. And so suddenly this veggie garden that didn't really have to look like anything at all is suddenly one of the key features. And I've yet to decide if it can sustain that. I've actually wondered whether or not I might lift all these beds up and move them somewhere else. I'm not quite sure yet. It certainly means I have to make it a lot prettier and hence stuff like this. Um, this mixed pot here of stuff. This is a, um, this is a just a big pot underneath there, um, with uh, various blue and purple things in them. The, that amazing spreading petunia that spreads to about a meter per plant. Um, that salvia Victoria blue, which really as an annual is pretty astonishing in, in how, um, like all salvias, I guess, is incredibly um, generous in its flowering. And then this Australian native Isotoma axillaris, which was in Punnets uh, at Bunnings, which I couldn't believe, I've never seen it in Punnets before. But the real winner, I think, of all is this really dark purple petunia. Petunias have an amazing scent, particularly in the evening, and particularly the dark purple ones. But they, these ones are good all day, even, uh, you don't have to wait till evening for the scent to emerge. So this veggie garden was always intended to look good, but it's really under pressure to look good now. And I'm not sure if it's up to it. It may not stay. Uh, I'll see how well I can look after it. Of course, you always have the best plans. You know, this year I'm gonna really keep it tidy and it's gonna be amazing and productive and you fail every single time. But you know, this is part of the fun and part of the reality of gardens.